We are so delighted to have been able to give these three awards to Sonia, to Jane, and to Kiva Kids and Kiva.org. Thank you all. Can I now welcome back to the stage Dr. Judith Roden to introduce this year's Lifetime Achievement Award recipient. contemporary of John D. Rockefeller's once observed, there's a loftier ambition than merely to stand high in the world. It is to stoop down and lift mankind a little higher. Tonight's recipient of our first Rockefeller Foundation Lifetime Achievement Award personifies that ideal. As President of the United States on the eve of a new millennium, he oversaw the longest peacetime economic expansion in America's history. He helped millions of Americans. He helped millions of Americans move from welfare to work. He supported democracy around the world. And he stood firmly for peace, from Northern Ireland to the Balkans to the Middle East. And since leaving the White House in 2001, he has applied his tremendous intellect and charisma and vision towards reducing the inequalities and the instabilities of the modern world and building a brighter future for all of us. As you know, the theme of this forum and the dinner is innovation, and it is President Bill Clinton's philanthropic innovation that I would actually like to highlight tonight. The Clinton Foundation has barely turned 10, yet already it has sparked a transformation in philanthropic practice one that creates exciting new opportunities for business and philanthropy to work as one. As President Clinton has described it, it all began in 2002 when he and Nelson Mandela traveled to Spain to close the International AIDS Conference. At the end of the event, Denzel Douglas, the Prime Minister of St. Kitts and Nevis came forward and he said, you know, when it comes to HIV AIDS, we don't have a denial problem, we don't have a stigma problem, we have a money and organizational problem. The president said to him, well, Denzel, what do you want me to do about it? And the prime minister said, I want you to fix it. Well, in a perfect world, we would all have magic wands to fix our problems. In an imperfect world, the next best thing is to have Bill Clinton on your side. At the time, the Clinton Foundation had only 12 employees, but it started looking into the situation. And it swiftly discovered that in the Bahamas, for example, the government was paying $3,600 per person for a generic drug that only cost $500. So President Clinton and his foundation set out to reorganize the market for public goods. They sent teams to visit governments in the Caribbean and Africa securing commitments to order HIV drugs if the prices could be cut. They worked with donors to line up the funding to guarantee swift payment. And they showed drug companies how they could make meaningful profit through higher volume and lower margin for their products. In President Clinton's words, the goal was to shift from a jewelry store model to a grocery store model. From high profit, low volume, uncertain payment to low margin, high volume, certain payment. And though he once said in an interview, this is not Einstein, we didn't develop the theory of relativity here. The truth is, it is very much Einstein in terms of looking at the world anew. In October 2003, President Clinton announced massive price cuts for a number of life-saving antiretroviral drugs. This was a watershed moment that has led over many years and thanks to many partners to saving millions of lives. Today, nearly four million people benefit from access to these treatments. And the Clinton Foundation has brought this bold approach to many other areas as well, from strengthening economic opportunity in developing countries, to promoting healthier childhood in the United States, to working with cities around the world to reduce their carbon emissions by tens of thousands of tons each year. But that's not all. In 2005, the President launched another innovation, the Clinton Global Initiative, 
which brings together world leaders, CEOs, philanthropists, NGO leaders, and more, not simply to talk about glo global problems, but to take collaborative action to resolve them. So far, CGI members have made nearly 2,000 commitments that could really save the lives of about 300 million people in areas from providing access to financial services to getting more girls in school, protecting or restoring millions of acres of forest, increasing access to safe drinking water, and most recently, at last month's CGI America meeting in Chicago, creating more than 124,000 jobs in the United States. It is really astonishing to think that all this began with a simple request for help, with the prime minister of a small island nation reaching out and President Clinton stepping forward to respond. It speaks to the defining belief that has guided the president all along, and I quote, he has said, people have the capacity to build a better world for themselves and their children. They just need the opportunity to do so. A journalist once wrote that history may remember Clinton as a philanthropist who happened to have been president. Tonight, we celebrate President Bill Clinton for reimagining the philanthropic landscape, for his unyielding conviction that problems can be solved, and for his willingness, his unerring willingness, to lead the way. President Clinton.